Welcome back. Now it's time to go up close with professional track star Molly Beckwith. Molly, you started out here in Indiana as a soccer player, but you ended your career on the track and field team. How did that happen? So I came to IU on a soccer scholarship, and um, all through high school, that was my dream was to be a um, to be a soccer player in, in college. And um, I had some pretty bad knee injuries that. Um, Four, four knee surgeries later, I decided to end my career as a, as a soccer athlete and um, walked onto the track team. Um, I wasn't, I just felt like I couldn't be done with my athletic career, so I decided to, to switch sports. And um, in high school, I had a little bit of success in track, so I decided to see, to see what I could do on the track, and I walked onto the track team my sophomore year. You've talked a lot about the biggest thing that you had to co overcome from the switch from soccer to track was gaining that confidence. How big was that for you, and how did you go about doing that? I think um, the confidence thing was, was a huge issue for me to get past because the reason that um, I stopped running track in high school was because of the fact that I had no confidence in my ability as a track athlete. And um, it's, so different, it's so different than soccer. Soccer, there's a team atmosphere, and um, you're kind of almost more in the background of things. If you make a mistake, you have all your teammates to help you and back you up. But... Um, when you step on the track, it's all you, and all your mistakes are just magnified to, to everyone watching. And so for me, it was one of those obstacles I had to get over. And um, I felt like I was constantly behind when I started running because I got into the sport. It was basically my first year running my sophomore year of college when these girls had been running for five, six years already. And so um, for me to just stand on the track with these girls looking left and right to me who were well, well more experienced than me was was tough on my confidence. So um, that was the biggest obstacle I had to overcome. Kind of going off of that, what goes through your mind before, during, and after a race? Um, I would say before the race um, is, is probably the biggest for me. It was the biggest thing that I need, needed to, to figure out when I got to Indiana and started running track. I saw, saw a um, sports psychologist, Dr. Carr, who um, was very, very helpful um, in kind of putting my mind in the right place in order to get the success that I wanted to on the track. And, um, and so before the race, it was more of a, um, you know, positive talking to myself and, and really and realizing that there was, there was nothing I could do about what everyone else was going to do that day. It was all about what, what, what am I going to do? What am I prepared to do? And the second that I took everyone else out of the picture and just concentrated on myself was when I really had the success I wanted. What does a typical day look like for a professional track athlete? Well, that is a really funny question, and I'm glad that you asked that because um, there's, I've asked so many professional track athletes. So, you know, it's cool. We get paid for running, and I get to practice every day for morning practice, afternoon practice, but what do you do other than that? Like, what am I supposed to do during the day when I'm sitting at home twiddling my thumbs? And, I mean, I get the answer from all the guys is, you just play video games. That's what you do all day. And I'm, well, I can't do that. I definitely can't do that. And some of the girls say yoga and some of them, and I, I picked up a part-time job. Um, I couldn't sit around and feel like I was actually doing something. As much as, as, much as my training was, was very difficult and it was exhausting, I still needed something else on my plate. So um, I picked up a part-time job, but those are also hard to keep when your schedule um, in the spring becomes you know, so different where you leave halfway through the week and then you can't, then you're out of the country for a week. So, um, yeah, for the most part, I pick up a part-time job and I took a class last semester just to keep myself occupied. What is the biggest difference other than being paid from switching to a college athlete to a professional one? I think, um, I think the difference between a collegiate athlete and a professional athlete is definitely a lifestyle change. There's um, in college, you're, no, you're just like everyone else. You have, you have classes to go to every night, and um, the little things that you need to put in place as a professional become, are not as important in, in college. So um, things like nutrition, and that was something that was huge for me. Um, I was talking to someone here um, before, the, before the show that um, I, had to, I had to lose 10 to 15 pounds um, of weight that I had in college. And that was just something that I had to commit to in order to, to be at that next level. So seeing a nutritionist is a huge part. Um, planning your meals and making sure that you're getting all the, the vitamins and stuff that you need to because every little thing needs to happen at this level. And there's, there's, no, there's no way that you can 
you know, not give 100% when you're a professional because everyone else is doing the same thing and, and you just need, really need to be on top of your game. Thank you so much for joining us.